Hello guys and welcome to episode 8 of my Rome 2 Total War campaign, Caesar and Gaul playing as the Romans. Now, as you may have noticed, I've already done episode 8 of Caesar and Gaul, but unfortunately, the save that I used to use, which was a quick save, got overwritten because I'd played other campaigns in the meantime. So that's a bit unfortunate, so that means I'm going to have to go all the way back and do every move that I've done in episode 8 again but instead of you know copying it and trying to get it to the same point because the game's so random I thought I'd just do it again and have like another version of episode 8 so hopefully you're happy with that now there's a few things I want to cover just before I get going uh, I haven't been making videos for the last week because I've been recovering from a like a quite bad throat infection which has really stopped me from sitting down and doing recording you probably still hear it in my voice because it hasn't fully recovered yet but I really wanted to get a video out because obviously I've been slacking quite badly and therefore just wanted to, to get back into it. I, I really enjoy making videos and it's very it's really disappointing when factors that I can't control come in and stop me from doing so. Anyway, enough about that. I am going to continue with the Caesar and Gaul campaign after completing my Rome to Iceni campaign last week. So... I think in the last in the last episode of Caesar and Gaul, I used Caesar to attack Devona because I was pretty sure that there was no way I was going to defend Narbomartius. I could take back the general to Narbomartius and defend against the uh, Vocontii, but the thing is, if I do that, I leave both Toulouse and Segedunum to attack from the Vivisci which is not what I want, which is exactly why I placed my army towards Devona in the last episode. Now, this is a, a reasonable army, and I'm going to have to fight this battle again, but we're going to take my army out of Toulouse, and we're going to start exploring towards Devona. And we have this army here that is basically going to go and attack Second Army, whether I like it or not. And that's exactly what happened last time. So I'm going to learn from my mistakes. We're going to take out the Defender of the Hills. And then we will move towards the Men of Morvan uh, to take over Devona. Not sure if I'll have enough movement points to hit Devona in the same turn. But hitting both of these armies separately will both save Segadunum. But it will also allow me to take Devona, hopefully. As long as I've got the movement points to do so. So we're playing against Levy Freeman, Celtic Slingers, and Celtic Use, and their general unit. So this should be a really interesting battle. So let's go and fight it on the battle map. So here we are. We're going to wait for the fog to go away to make it easier to control my army throughout the battle. There we go, nice and dry. We've got quite a hilly place. Hopefully they're not going to be camping up on this hill somewhere. That might get annoying. Okay, no, their, arm, their army's right here. That works out just fine. So, since I've last played Caesar in Gaul, I've got a new graphics card, which means that we're going to be running at 60 FPS pretty much all the time, which is wonderful. And also there's been a plenty of updates to Rome 2. So we're on patch 9, I think it is now. And formation attack is actually worth using. So, legionaries are very strong at the moment. Now, of course, I've still got the steam bug going on. Not really much I can do about that. But the thing is, what I can do here is just line up my legionaries. We can march forwards, take on the Levy Freeman unit by unit, and we should win the battle. We don't have many skirmishers in this army, but we do have the ballistas and auditors, which is going to force the enemy to come towards me. So what I'm going to do is actually place my ballistas behind in the middle, and I'm going to get my uh, catapults on the left as well. We'll get the skirmishers to sit amongst them. And we'll get the Celtic warriors on one side with my cavalry on the other. Okay, so that should work out. And we'll just wait here and we'll start firing the blisters at them if we're in range. Nope, we're not, but they are forced to move towards me anyway because if they didn't then I would just move my artillery forwards anyway. So let's just uh, target his Spear Noble unit, because he's got it out in front for some weird reason. I can't say the AI is much better than it was before. And 
incoming rocks should tear apart that unit. Ah, even more. There's a lot of dead men. Being forced to run now. And I'm going to target the Celtic Hughes on this side so that the rocks come through and hit the Levy Freeman behind. So you can see we're doing tons of damage now. Haven't managed to kill the general yet. We've done a lot of damage to their most elite unit. I'm going to start uh, targeting these Celtic Slingers. And they will start to hit the uh, Levy Freeman behind. The battle is turning in our favour. Okay, so we're going to have the uh, Celtic Slingers now engaging my Legionaries. They shouldn't take too much damage because of their huge shields. But as soon as the uh, infantry line comes forward from the enemy, we can charge all our Legionaries towards them. And then I can use the cavalry to mop up after all of their infantry is engaged. So let's just quickly do that now. I'm going to start to run forwards the men and engage them. I'm going to do it unit by unit. Keep the game pause while I do so. And the units that aren't occupied on the right can go and take out the general. Okay, so let's go ahead and play. And as soon as my infantry is engaged with the Levy Freeman, we can chase down the Celtic Youths with the Light Horse. We okay, go, the Pilar coming in, wrecking the front line. And now we will kill off the slingers. Gonna stop the artillery. I'm gonna actually move forward to my skirmishers so they can fire into the enemy units. Keep sweeping round onto their missile units with all the light horse. Better not get engaged by the spear nobles though. That could end badly. So I'm going to split these units up now. And that way we can maneuver around the spear nobles. You can see that we're rampaging over the enemy right now. The enemy general's trying to catch up. Okay, stopping that charge there so we don't charge into spears. I don't want to lose any men unnecessarily. Get these legionaries to engage their general and then I can charge that general unit in the back. Unless it routes, which is a possibility. Going to continue the battle, kill off the rest of their men. We've got plenty of horsemen to finish the job. So, just going to speed it up and make sure that that happens. The enemy general is dead. Nearly done. A few more units to mop up. I think and that is about it. The general's just sweeping up this last unit of Celtic Yews. We're just going to quit the battle there. Decisive victory. 74 losses for us. 1,379 for the enemy. We're going to execute the men. 
The army will retreat, that's fine. And we are still in range to attack Devona, so this is going to work out very well for us. Okay. So let's increase the skills of Caesar. And we're going to go with Increased Tactician again to give him the plus 24% campaign map movement range. And that now we're going to go and attack the men of Morvan outside Devona. So a lot of men to face off against. But we have our full strength still from the last battle. So it shouldn't be too much of an issue. This is going to be very much like the last episode. So let's go ahead and fight this one on the battle map. So we're going to keep it dry so we can make good use of our ballistas and catapults. So let's start the deployment. And whoa, okay, we've got a much better advantage than we had before. Except from the camera is dire on circumstances like this. Right, so what are we going to do? Can men stand on these slopes? No, they can't. Okay, that's interesting because it means that we can basically form lines and places that the enemy cannot pass we can just form our legionary lines within them so like for instance here if the enemy tries to run up here they're going to have to fight my legionaries meanwhile i can just have a couple of my skirmisher units standing on top of this hill and firing down on the enemy this is gonna actually be really really nice for us so i am just going to line up all my men and we'll get my catapults on this hill here as well and we'll get a couple of men on the flanks, my warriors and my legionaries that are left over with my cavalry as well. Awesome. So we'll keep a unit of cavalry behind the men just in case and we'll get our ballistas onto the hill as well. Right, let's start the battle. Should be really interesting this one. We're in a much better position than we were before. Looks like I've accidentally left these legionaries in the wrong place. I'm going to move them over to the left flank. I could also put them up here in these trees. Because this is quite a big sort of gap through my defences. Yeah, we'll see how it ends up. I can actually just put my Celtic warriors in here. Use them as like an ambush if they try to go around my defences. And then the extra legionaries can just stay over here in case the enemy tries to hit my ballistas. Awesome. So we're in a really nice position on the hill. And they are going to form up into one massive army, I presume. They've got all these <laughs> reinforcements coming, most of them being Celtic tribesmen though. Um, not very special units at all. It's really the large amount of skirmishers that hurts me in battles like these because I don't have a decent way to deal with it when the enemy has more infantry units than I do. Because the, uh, the ideal way to deal with it is that you engage all of the infantry on the ground and then you kill off the slingers and any other skirmishers with your cavalry while the enemy is occupied whereas when you have too many infantry units to engage at the same time they can use those to kill your cavalry which the AI actually does pretty effectively if you, if you start charging towards enemy skirmishers in terms of the AI they will almost always send the unit to go help them out they should take a beating walking up this hill from the catapults and ballistas we are just going to speed it up because I'm pretty sure you don't want to necessarily see them walking forever. And our catapults will be in range pretty shortly, I think. These Celtic skirmishers will do an amazing job if they engage me up this slope. I'm going to readjust the army a bit. I might actually bring over another unit on this side because it looks really exposed and just spread these ones out a bit further. 
So the catapults are in range, so are the ballistas. And they are now firing onto the enemy. So we make sure that they maintain the same targets. They've been firing down here, which has actually done a lot of damage to these Levy Freemen. But I'm going to tell them to, to, to target these Celtic Slingers on this side. I think we'll target directly the Celtic Warriors because they're moving really slow. There we go. That's more like it. Forcing them to run towards my army now. Right, I want to stop them from firing just so that I can get better targets. The enemy army is now coming up. And, well, we won't be in range of that for a while. What we can do, though, is start targeting these Spear Warriors now. And now I'm actually going to target the Noble Horse. Because the Noble Horse, very, very vulnerable. Two ballista shots. Our hidden units have been discovered. Okay, so let's engage this unit of Celtic warriors. The legionary is taking some free shots, but that's not really much we of a worry. The enemy's hidden units. going to charge into the back of these noble horse so we can surround them legionaries, your orders. We await your spread out these legionaries and engage their spear troops and you can see here the engagement at this area is allowing my skirmishers to get nice shots into the back of their troops I'm going to actually try and get a legionary unit to come out and help kill these noble horse. My luck horse are doing an okay job, considering how much of an elite unit the noble horse actually are in comparison. But we need to get rid of those noble horse, so that we can properly engage their skirmishers. So you're going to use a more depleted unit of legionaries to attack the noble horse and then I'm going to reinforce against the Gallic warriors here down this slope. Now for some reason we've got some levy freemen that have broken through my defence. So I'm just going to charge them with my general. Which should be able to break that unit. Okay, Our general is under so my light horse is free. We have four units coming up the slope, which is going to stop me from charging them. Okay, so let's just retreat into the forest. These legionaries taking an unnecessary amount of fire into the side from these slingers. Gonna get these horsemen over to the right. Going to get my Celtic warriors to move over now. Because it doesn't look like anyone's going to be attacking me on my side. It's just going to be on this slope here. So let's engage. Get my men to reinforce. And as soon as this engagement is in full effect, we can then uh, bring the cavalry around the back. The enemy general is dead. I've actually killed uh, the enemy general like a hundred times, which is going quite well, I guess. Legionaries, yes, come on. Night force, 
And let's get these horsemen round. Our hidden units have been discovered. It's like they're trying to flank me. So I'm gonna have to bring some legionaries up onto this hill. Meanwhile we can reinforce the middle. Gonna get the Celtic warriors to run in and help with this melee. Our men flee the field of battle. This is a shameful display. So many missile forces that are firing at the moment that it's really making it hard for my legionaries to stand their ground because they're being picked off very, very badly. And anyway, my Celtic warriors coming in here, gonna be helping out, put them into a frenzy. Men flee the field of battle. This is a shameful display. We'll give second wind to these Celtic warriors so they can do as much damage as they need. We've got these Celtic tribesmen now attacking my light horse, which is really bad. Just gonna have to take them out of that engagement. One unit of legionaries running away all the way down the hill, but I'm not gonna stop them from doing so. You can see the angle of this slope is allowing all their skirmishers to continue firing on my men. And I can't get my cavalry round because they're being harassed by enemy infantry. I can pre outmaneuver these men and, and manage to get a charge into the back, but it will be a, a long time until that actually happens. The enemy general is dead. So that's another enemy general dead. We're going to get these horsemen charge into the Celtic Slingers. Going to get my general round the side. Unless he is engaged. Which he is. Yes, he is engaged. There we go. That will work out. A nice general ability there. Should really use those a bit more effectively. We should have used that at the start. We'll charge into these Celtic skirmishers with my general. Break that unit pretty easily. Keep following down these slinger units. Make sure that my general kills off all of these missile forces. We have the majority of their men now surrounded though. But we've taken so many losses, it's actually ridiculous. Keep pushing on to the enemy now. And that should break them entirely. Okay. So, it's going to pretty much be a fury victory, I think. I think I could have probably handled it a lot better. Um, I am a bit, obviously, a bit rusty playing with the Romans. But um, all those skirmisher units, like I say, just dealing so much damage to my men while they're engaged, which is just horrible. Anyway, we're going to continue this one so that we can kill off as many men as possible. Don't want to let really anyone get away so that we can take over Devona m much easier. These Oath Swarm being slaughtered by my skirmishers. And all these men running out away on this side. I will just get my cavalry eventually to catch up and kill them. At the moment though. They have other units to kill. So 150 Celtic tribesmen there going to get slaughtered. And my general looks like he's nearly done mopping up. Engage! Warriors! 
You can keep chasing with the legionaries because they are actually surprisingly fast. See that these Celtic tribesmen are being slowly caught up to and cut down. Might not even need my horses over there. Okay, the Celtic, Celtic skirmishers almost all dead. So we'll leave them to it. And we will go and take out the Celtic tribesmen instead. Let's just speed it up. Not sure how quickly they're going to get over there. These are pretty armoured horsemen. So they are going to get puffed out very quickly from chasing all these men around. Especially going up and down hills like this. You can see they are already exhausted. Enemy getting run down over here. That unit entirely destroyed. So let's try and send those down to take out the Celtic youths. It looks like my general just about managed to catch up before they got off the battlefield. Making sure they all die is it's actually really important. And I think that's enough. So, costly victory. I lost probably a couple of units there of legionaries and the unit of horsemen. But as you can see, three armies destroyed. Pyrrhic victory. Okay, so I only lost actually two units, a unit of legionaries and a unit of light horse, which is going to allow the rest of them to replenish, which is not too bad, I guess. Could be better. You know, obviously a lot of these men have barely any left. It's actually pretty ridiculous. But look at that. Just so many dead men. So we're going to kill the captives. Is impossible. And we're going to attack Devona. Now, I'm not going to auto-resolve this because I am no doubt going to lose extra units uh, if I do that. So we're going to have to fight this on the battle map and use our most replenished units in order to win the battle. So let's just quickly go with an assault and take Devona for ourselves. So we're going to leave it dry. We're going to select our most replenished legionaries and these Celtic warriors can help out as well. We'll get these Celtic skirmishers, my general and my light horse. We've also got the Roman ballistas and the onagers in, at full strength so they can be used effectively as well. And that is going to be about it. All the rest of the legionaries can get out of the way. And all these men can be grouped together as my army for today. So, let's just quickly lock them into a formation. And we'll move them towards the enemy. So let's go find out where the enemy are with these light horse. Move the Onagers forward so they're in range to attack the enemy. Looks like my ballistas are already firing on something, although I don't know what. Ah, looks like we can see some units in the middle here. So they're going to be the target of my ballistas. Coming shots here. And they only have four units, and that is these four units here. I'm going to target these uh, Celtic tribesmen, and the rest can just be ran down by my cavalry. They managed to do quite a lot of damage, actually, <laughs> with that initial throw. But that's going to be a very dead. Celtic skirmish unit. Riders, 
Also, it's taking a lot of extra damage from these skirmishes on the side. Gonna get them out of there again. The rock's still hitting the enemy. A general can kill off these Celtic skirmishers. Should be a fourth unit somewhere. Gonna stop these firing now to avoid friendly fire. So, frenzied charge into the last unit that I was looking for with the cavalry. And that should absolutely annihilate it. Our general is under attack. Last valiant attempt at killing some of my men here with these Celtic tribesmen, but they're not going to last very long. And they are slaughtered. So we're going to end the battle. Decisive victory. 24 losses, 254 for the enemy. And Devona is ours. So we slaughtered a lot of men that time. You know, three armies, four armies actually, because we had a battle before that. And the garrison force. Amazing. Okay, so we're going to go and occupy Devona so that the public order isn't affected too harshly. And now we can go with the Bread and Games Edict to sort it out much quicker. We can actually uh, begin to convert this grove to a shrine of our own religion, but I'm going to wait until I have a bit more money to make it into a shrine of... or sacred grove, sorry, so that we get the extra happiness. Right, now, what looks like is going to happen is Stalkers of Kama are going to hit Navamati. It's not much I can do about that. But I've got this army here, Legion 3. After they've finished recruiting these cavalry, can head round and hit Basio, which is the capital of the Vocontii. Then they're going to wish they hadn't attacked Narbomartius, and that army can then come down and hit that army of, of the Vocontii when they own my settlement. So that's fine. Um, all of the rest of these places are are good for now, I think. So, yeah. But unfortunately, that has been my time. So, hopefully, you've really enjoyed the uh, battles that took place today. It was actually really interesting to actually attack so many of the vivisized men and kill them all. Um, Devona is now ours, and it's pretty much left the rest of their settlements open for the taking, uh, where all of their armies were stationed at Devona, and we killed them. So... They don't have much to defend with now, it's just that I might have to send the First Legion back to take Narva Martius if the Third Legion gets occupied at Vasio. I'm not entirely sure what's going to happen. We're in a much better situation than we were at the end of the last 8th Caesar and Gaul episode. So I'm going to be continuing it from here for episode 9. Either way, like I say... Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.